Welcome to the Arizona Culinary Institute video learning series. Today you will be learning about the straight dough mixing method. This is commonly used in yeast breads. You will also review the 12 steps of yeast dough production. After proper mise en place, the chef will begin. She takes a large mixing bowl and adds the water. This water should be about 7 degrees Fahrenheit. The chef is using fresh yeast, she'll place that in the water. Next, the chef adds the granulated sugar. This acts as food for the yeast. Using a wire whisk, the chef breaks up the yeast in the water and starts to dissolve the sugar. After about 30 seconds, the water will take on a slightly muddy appearance. She whisks for another 30 seconds. The chef then adds a the flour. This will act as a barrier protecting the yeast from the salt. If salt comes in direct contact with the yeast, it will kill it. The chef adds the salt. Next, the chef adds the remaining ingredients. Here she's adding the remaining butter. She'll place the bowl on the mixer and using a dough hook attachment, she turns the mixer on low speed. She'll mix for about 30 seconds. At this point, the flour will begin to take on the water. This is called hydration. The chef checks for proper hydration after about a minute. If the dough is too wet, it might need more flour. If the dough is too dry, it might need more liquid. Here she grabs a piece of dough and feels it within her hands and it should feel like a wet sponge. The chef will continue to mix on low speed for a couple more minutes. The dough will separate from the bowl and form a ball around the dough hook. Once this is achieved, the chef stops the mixer, changes the speed to medium, and will continue to mix. This speed is good for proper gluten development. A good rule of thumb is to check on the mixer periodically to make sure that your dough is mixing correctly. After about three to four minutes, the chef will check to see if proper gluten development is occurring. The chef checks the dough using what was called the painting method. She pulls out a piece of dough and pulls it apart. If she can pull it apart to five to seven inches without it breaking, the gluten has developed properly. Once the dough is finished, the chef lowers the bowl, removes the hook, and removes the bowl from the mixer. She will then transfer the dough into a previously oiled container. Here she's using a Lexan that has been sprayed with baking spray. This will prevent the dough from sticking to uh, the container after it's fermented. Here she stretches and kneads the dough to allow proper fermentation. She then covers the dough with plastic wrap. She will then label, date, and time it and place it in a room temperature area for it to ferment. Fermentation takes anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Here, the chef is using previously fermented dough. She will punch down the dough, which expels the gas, redistributes the food for the yeast, and redistributes the heat within the dough. She will then remove the dough from the container onto the bench. Using a little flour, the chef will then dust the bench to place her dough so it will not stick during the scaling process. The chef will then use a dial scale and a bench knife during the scaling process. Proper scaling is important if you want consistent product. The chef then cuts the dough with the bench knife into her desired portion size. During this process, the dough is actually cut, as well as the gluten. The chef will then need to restretch the dough or stretch the gluten. This process is called rounding. The chef uses her thumb and forefinger. With a lot of practice, reshapes the dough into a ball. If this is done correctly, a hole on the bottom will form. 
The chef then places the dough on the bench to rest. This is called benching. After a few minutes, the chef goes into final production. She then will place the dough onto a lined parchment paper pan. This is called panning. The dough will go into its final production. Today the chef is making Kaiser rolls. After the dough is panned, she will use what we call a Kaiser press to make the signature Kaiser marking on top of each roll. The dough will then go into a proof box. The proof box should be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 90% humidity, until the rolls double in size. Here, a student is making relief cuts on previously proofed bread. Relief cuts are important to prevent them from irregularly breaking during baking. This will allow a consistent product. Next, the chef prepares the loaves onto lightly floured boards to ease them for transfer into the oven. The chef will then gently slide the rolls directly onto the hearth of our deck oven. This takes great caution. Here, the chef assists the student in loading the oven. The student and chef then places ice cubes directly on the hearth surface. This will create steam within the oven, allowing for a better crust development. The oven can then be closed for baking. After baking, the student then removes the finished bread onto a cooling rack. The bread then can be served in the restaurant eaten or, after proper cooling, can then be packaged or frozen.